Manchester City. Manchester City, of course, a really, a really good international break for, for them with the <laughs> renewal of the contract for Pep Guardiola staying at the club. They have a number of cases that are currently going on. I know one of them was settled in terms of the, the APT element via the courts. However, the Premier League are pushing on ahead with amendments to that rule as opposed to wiping it out completely, which is what many people believe City want. Now, according to sources, <laughs> unlawful, Terry, some elements of it are unlawful, but the overarching rule was agreed by the same legal experts that it is needed and necessary. So the same people that said there are some elements that need changing because they're unlawful, 23 of the 25 points raised, they agree with the Premier League on. So we have to be very, very... So I, we'll get into that in a little bit. But the story has now emerged that there's a growing confidence amongst some clubs that Man City will fall short in their bid to block the vote for sponsorship rules, understanding that Wolves and now Everton who last year sided with City and now, with the amendments being made, are going to back the Premier League. I want to throw this out to uh, Tom first of all. How big a defeat do you think this is for the likes of Manchester City, for the likes of Newcastle, who in many people's eyes have been pushing for these rules to be stripped right back or completely and utterly taken out? I don't, it, it seems like a big blow. I mean, obviously... As you said, the Wolves and Everton going back kind of just shows me that it was every club for themselves because they were only backing it last year because they had PSR concerns. Whereas now that they're out of it, they kind of don't need to back it anymore. So they'd rather just do what's best for them and stop anything going through like that. Are you sure? Everyone kind of, well, the feeling I had anyway was that there was the two big city cases going on. If they got a win in one, the second one's probably going to go quite well for them as well. And whilst, yes, they won the the, the, the case on, on the ground of it being unlawful, they've not got what they wanted out of it because the rules aren't gone. The rules are, the rules are just being amended. And I don't think it'll necessarily change all that much in, in, in the landscape in the way that people thought it might do with, you know, Newcastle might be able to go and spend, go and get as much, many sponsorships as they want now, and City can go use Abu Dhabi in the same way. And this, that, and that. I don't think that's going to happen. Which it, it, it's it's hard to tell exactly what the impact that's going to be straight away. But I, I think it. I, I'm I'm looking at this one. A, it proves to me that every club's just out there to look after themselves, and there's no sort of oh, we I can't believe the FA are against us. It's but if that rule helps us, go for it. Be my guest. But it also, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see what it's like in conjunction with the 115 case, because mm. I, I wonder what the ramifications of the APT getting done, uh, getting uh, amended do regards to that, maybe, you know, back backlogging or, and also in the immediate future for clubs like City and Newcastle, who maybe had sponsorship deals in the pipeline, expecting this APT to fall through and now they're going to have to go back on them deals and try and find new ways to, to, to finance it. So the, the fact that more clubs are pulling out with support for City's case, I think it's just, it, it, it it's a little bit damning in that sense that it clubs weren't in it because, oh, City is standing up for what's right. City are doing the right thing here. It was scratch, that, that, that helps me. So I'll back that. Now that doesn't help me. Well, I'll go with the Premier League to try and get in their good books. It's all very political, and it it, it it's not what football should really be about. But it, it is what it is, and I just find it yeah. funny yeah. that now now Everton don't need the you know don't, don't have any PSR concerns at all. Well, it's, it's, it's all the blue noses. It's all the blue noses that have been saying, "Big up the blue cartel. We're against the red cartel." Like you've just joined the Red Cartel. If the Red Cartel exists, you've just gone and joined it, my old mate. Uh, Lily here says that uh, City and Villa's point uh, is that the problem is not necessarily solved by the vote. It is an interim position until the tribunal tribunal the de the uh, determination is handed down. It goes on to say that no, the rules. No, the rules are more relaxed. Seems to be no rules are more relaxed except for shareholder loans. City's point is everyone should just wait for that tribunal. And I get City's point. I absolutely get your point. And she's called the, the Times reporting inaccurate 
um, here. And look, Lily, I, I understand where you're coming from. I sense that the Premier League believe that when the tribunal information comes down, they're going to be able to keep these rules in place and there will be some amendments. And the reason I think they believe this is because they, they City won on, two, and this is when me and Nobbins had this conversation. Technically, City won the court case because City was suing the Premier League on 25 counts and they won at least one of them. And in the eyes of the law, if you sue someone on 25 counts and win just one, you are the winner of that lawsuit. However, in the reality of the situation, it's about what happens to them APT laws. If by the end of this, they are very similar to what they were and it stops teams from being able to sponsor their grass a billion pound a season and bring in absorbent amounts of sponsorship money with much less, much less checks and balances, that essentially the likes of City and everybody that wants that to be in place, they you lose that case. Even though technically you won it in, in the eyes of the law, you have to look at these things through through the reality of it. And I think what's telling is that clubs that were backing City a few short months ago are now suddenly on the Premier League's side again. I think that's really significant in this. The one thing I've always said for reading the initial documents that came out is that I don't believe there was going to be a... Ma I didn't think this was a huge win for City that was going to enable them to suddenly have an extra two, three, four, five hundred million pound a year in sponsorship deals. If any, there might be a slight increase in what they can do, but that was just based on listening to what the tribunal said at the time, that ATP needs to be in place. The majority of the rule is lawful. And when I, so I'm not going to go at City here, but when City said the, the rule has been deemed unlawful, when that first statement came out, I thought, wow, that is d so damning for the Premier League. You then read more and more of it, and you're like, oh. So, and St Stefan Borson put this out. He's a big City guy. Basically said a few elements of the rule are unlawful, not and you could therefore deem that that makes the whole law on uh, the whole rule unlawful because a few elements are. However, they're, they're relatively easy to amend, right? Because there's small facets of it. And I just think that this situation, I think whether City win or whether City lose, I think a line needs to be drawn under it. There are threats and City have said, and, and Fraser puts it out here, that our lawyers have said they will take them to court again. If they make those amendments though, so you've got to remember 25 points made already. 23 of them you've already lost. So the Premier League doesn't have to touch them. If they make the amendments to those rules to coincide with the feedback from the tribunal, the likelihood of City then overturning more of those two points again and any of the others is so minuscule. I don't see why Manchester City would drop 20 or 30 million pound on that court case when they can invest that into players. I, I know they're threatening it, but personally, I can't see how they win that battle, especially not if the majority of the Premier League clubs then back these rules again, that's going to stand a long way in the Premier League's favour. Uh, Igal, what, what do you make of all this, mate? I don't think... The, I, don't, I think this is the tip of the iceberg. I think there's still way more to come. And this is just... This is just small wins and losses that either side is trying to pedal as as a major story i think the big story the 115s the uh, what's going to happen with man city that is that is the major the, that is the major battle this is what i would call as the side battle this is the free, this is the chips this is this is the salad this is just the side battle and this is just to try to distract everyone from the major uh, ongoing uh, dispute that they still have and wh whoever comes out on top on this one it could just start to paint a bigger picture on the uh, on the other one so it's they need to man city losing this could could be a crucial cog in their future uh, battles also no i understand that i think I, I i think you're right it could be the tip of the iceberg uh sean here says some of the a uh, apt law is crucial or football is finished i do agree with that to a certain extent and i know it just uh tune tactics has just arrived here welcome to the show that their owners are the ones that scare me the most in this because theoretically, if owners could sponsor the clubs whatever they wanted, Newcastle, Newcastle's owners are richer than all of our owners combined, which just means that that it would. And again, Newcastle fans, and actually, I think in the end, Newcastle fans would care. I think in the short term, they'd love it, but then it would be like you know when you play those football manager games and you were a kid and you could put the cheat in so your club had a billion pounds and could sign every player, and then after a couple of seasons, you're like, well, this is ridiculous because I'm winning every game. It's not competitive anymore. Uh, Fraser says the Premier League owe us over 150 million in damages, Terry. Where have you got that from? Where's that story? I haven't seen that. 
also, if let, let's say that the rules are amended and then it's passed through tribunal, damages on what grounds? <laughs> because it didn't reputation. Oh, yeah. Also, what, what, Premier... what reputational damages, though? Because it would turn up the city did end up. Well, you know... the, only, the, the only time they could do this to the Premier League is if they prove themselves completely innocent in the 115 case and then can prove again when it comes to damages, you have to prove that what's being said about you has cost you money. So, again, when it comes you know, sometimes people say to me, oh, Terry, um, this TikToker said X about you. You should sue him. It would be so difficult for me to go to a court of law and say this TikTok was made and it's damaged my life because I've got to prove that it's damaged me financially. And in fact, this is, this is what the trolls don't understand. You very rarely kill somebody by trolling them. There's in their, their presence on socials. You just enhance it. You make more people watch the shows. <laughs> so you can't actually prove in a court of law that you've been damaged in that way. Uh, Liverpool FC TV uh, says the City PR machine made up all those stories that they had won. They won nothing. Otherwise, APT and the PSR would have been but, but Both sides peddled the analysis. It was the day that came out, literally within half an hour, you had Man City releasing a statement saying, you know, it, it was a big thing, this, that, and the other. Premier League coming out and saying it wasn't actually that big. Both sides are painting their narratives. I don't think we're actually going to truly know what who won and who lost and yada 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 until everything is done and all the documents are there That's, to be looked at. I think right it's, now I it's think, just PR yeah. machines going. I, at each other. I, I agree. Even even when it comes to the one one five case, to a degree. I mean, based on what Nobbin said, if the Premier League win one of the hundred and fifteen, they've beaten City and proven them to be cheaters. Now we all know in reality that's bullshit. That's all bullshit. Like, we, we, you need to wait and see the wood for the trees. If the Premier League say we beat City in this case, what's their punishment? A one million pound fine and a slap on the wrists. The, the City won. City won the case, right? The re mm -hmm. it's, it's it's either the punishment or what happens to these rules afterwards that determine who the actual winners were. I, I absolutely agree with you, mate. hundred percent, hundred percent. There. Uh, I'm suing E. Gal for too much waffle. That's from Jimbo. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be suing me. I'm, 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 I'm giving you a good breakfast. <laughs> oh, waffle! I wonder what you meant for a second. Then I was, I, my head was gone. Um, 